Okay, so the last panel for today is is all about the dynamic between or a possible dynamic between jihadist and far right mobilization going on in Western Europe. I'm going to start with with a few points um, that I think um, we observed, uh, Volodya and myself, while going through these reports, but also thinking a bit about this wider literature on radicalization and most importantly, um, the EU's take and interest in, in radicalization. So um, basically one of the things that I wanted to, to bring to your attention is that post-2001, yeah, we all know what happened in 2001, post-2001 research on political violence very often is equating radicalization with jihadism and violence rather than ideas and polarization. And I think this is an explicit point on the RAN website, so Radicalization Awareness Network website of the European Union. I was thinking here about IGAP and, and um, what I think is particularly useful in the IGAP framework, uh, the focus on polarization before violent action. Um, and I think also, not just in our in our panel, but uh, also other teams such as Hungary and um, and Turkey, uncover the crucial pivotal role that mainstream political actors play in driving polarization through discourse. So this is kind of like an overarching um, statement um, for you to take as food for thought for our discussion afterwards. Um, two more points. So again, as some of you have noted, I think we've heard this from Umut several times, that there's that far-right radicalization is a neglected threat, is something that we hear, that we heard uh, also today up until today, up until now. Um, even, even though we have the EU's 2011 created radicalization awareness network, however, as I did serious research on this, meaning I just look, had a look at the posts, um, recent posts on the website, again, you have a very, very strong um, focus on jihadi networks and only one of these things that you see on the right hand side here uh, deals, with, uh, deals with far right radicalization. Okay, and an important um, point is that most of the right-wing violence is not usually counted um, as terrorism. I think Volodya inserted this point into the presentation. If you want to say more about it, Volodya, then please go ahead. Um, however, what this point is about from my perspective is that simply um, simply if, if you think of, of hate crimes and basically the categories in which far-right mobilizations have been analyzed more recently. Yeah, so just think about uh, the mobilizations against the, um, in, the, the incoming refugees of 2015, 2016. Even though the violence against these refugees was to a certain extent strongly coordinated, um, basically nobody thinks of these, uh, of these mobilizations as, as terror or terrorism. Yeah? So we have all a, a different conceptual uh, framework for dealing with that. And I think we should, we should look more into whether that is a legitimate thing or not. Um, Volodya, yeah, yeah. the floor is yours for the following yeah, thank slide. You. Uh, our last slide before the country presentations uh, would start. So uh, framing the question for this panel as a shift from jihadism to right-wing radicalism, um, one way would be to think about this relation as a kind of like mutual legitimation re reinforcement that creates uh, injustices and grievances for each side and in this way it escalates polarization. So there, there have been like a lot of uh, social science research of this kind of processes and based on multiple cases and the ethnic conflict that we've just discussed uh, is one of the like primary cases for this. And uh, looking through this perspective, we could, uh, for example, try to uh, see how, for, uh, how, if not not that really frequent, how quite bloody jihadist terror actions uh, were creating uh, legitimation for the far-right radicalism. However, uh, we are not really sure it really vice versa, that the far-right radicalism contributes so it, this spiral escalation might not be actually there and uh, this uh, brings us to two other factors uh, that may contribute to the further jihadi radicalization that's uh, the centrist parties accommodation and appropriation of the radical right narratives against migrants and muslims 
And uh, there have been many examples from different countries how it actually works in, in the United Kingdom, in France, in Germany, and so on and so forth. And it would be interesting to discuss, is this reversing now after the shocking assault on the capital in the United States, which could bring the issue of the far right radicalism uh, closer to the center of mainstream attention? Or was it simply some short-term conjuncture of attention which would not have long-term consequences? And that the factor is, of course, the role of the state and specifically enforcement institutions that uh, on the one hand, uh, in some countries like the United Kingdom and France have strong colonial legacies that may contribute to radicalization. On the other hand, uh, the, the many cases of right wing penetration to these institutions that uh, creates certain biases. And uh, these factors may actually uh, uh, show that the, this dynamics between jihadism and far right radicalism may be closer to, may have very interesting parallels with state and party led radicalization rather than with the model of uh, mutual escalation of uh, kind of like ethnic or religious conflict. 